Hey guys, Joe here doing another one from the table. I'm actually filming like three or four right now, so don't forget to become a member. That way you can see those ad free up until they become public. It's January 2022. Ad revenue always goes down in January to the point where it's like I should be standing on a freeway off ramp and holding up a sign that says, please help, I make YouTube videos. If you can subscribe or at least comment or use my Amazon affiliate links, you'll help the channel in ways that you don't even know. And that would be awesome because it would allow me to get things and show things and do things. Because right now I'm limited to just doing tabletop reviews just because of the sheer cost of parts and other availability issues. So keeping that in mind, go to Liberty Arms, Google them, Harrisonburg, Virginia, Liberty Arms, help me out, show them some love and everybody will be happy. So let's dive into it. Sky, it's a company that's been around for a while. I bought my first Sky CPX-1 back in 2017. It was actually a uh, Black Friday sale. I paid $200 for a CPX-1 with the standard safety, had a horrendous trigger, the grip hurt when you shot it, but it was consistent. It was pretty reliable. Although there were problems with people getting ones that had cracked crowns and cracked slides. But again, Sky actually stepped up and they took care of any issues they had. Well, moving on to 2019, and they announced a new gun. In 2020, they actually showed it, and that was this guy, which you're going to take a look at right now. Inside this box, you have a CPX-1. No, I'm just kidding. This is the all-new... Let's go ahead and drop the mag, uh, Roebuck Quad Lock DVG-1 Red Dot from Sky. Now again, this one is borrowed from Liberty Arms. It's still available for sale, and we are going to take a look at it. And it's kind of cool, and I think you'll probably enjoy it, because Sky was at the forefront of the small double stack 9. They were a 10 plus 1 back in 2017. It wasn't a popular thing back then. I'll show you it's clear. But in 2020, they announced this guy, and I've been seeing it in magazines and stuff, but distributors, at least the major distributors, have had a hard time getting them because of supply chain issues and all that good stuff. But this takes the CPX-1, corrects a lot of the issues that I had with it, as well as gives it a trigger worth shooting. Because the original was double action only. It had the exact same trigger pull every single time you shot it. Uh, you can go up here and check out a CPX-1 red dot I did. Uh, again, I lamented the trigger. In fact, I think it was the exact same color combination as this guy. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. There are a couple of changes from the CPX-1 red dot to the DVG-1 red dot. Uh, first off, again, trigger. You can see this one has a flat face trigger, which is pretty cool. It also has no manual safety on it. This gun is single action only, meaning once you pull the trigger, that's it. It is dead. Still 10 plus 1, by the way. But since it's a striker fired, it's a much lighter pull, much easier pull. Reset is still pretty much all the way out, but it's very audible. Uh, not as tactile, but very audible. The next shot is just as simple as pulling. It's probably like a seven and a half to eight and a half pound trigger, which is fine because it also has no external safeties on this version. As you can see, no trigger safety, no manual safety. It is available with the manual safety, but this particular one does not have it. The overall design is still pretty similar. However, you'll see they changed the back strap. If you look at the original gun, it has like these uh, supposed cuts that were supposed to make it so that the rear of the grip would squish a little bit. However, all it did was pinch your hand when it did compress, and 99% of the time it didn't compress at all, and it just dug into the sides of your hand. This one is, this one is a lot better. It actually feels kind of uh, Ruger Security 9-ish, which is actually not a bad grip at all. I need to buy a Security 9, so again become a member of the channel so that we can do that. But it feels a little bit security 9-ish. It has, still has the thumb spot there, so you can train yourself to hold your gun the right way. Doesn't have like a memory spot on the top, but it does have these cutouts in the sides of the slide, or sides of the frame, so that you can kind of rest your finger up there. It becomes like a memory spot. 
forward slide serrations, rear slide serrations, pretty common stuff here. It, let's go ahead and talk about the red dot. As I said, this is a change from the CPX red dot lineup. This is a Riton light. It looks to be manufactured to the same specs. It looks like all the controls are the same controls. It doesn't really have controls. You have Allen keys for up, down, left, right. Really quick tutorial in order to adjust it for the up and down. You have a certain amount of movement here. However, if you need more movement, you're going to have to loosen those screws with the, um, excuse me, the crimson trace that used to be on them. It was pretty annoying because you actually had to loosen up the rear of the optic because it comes super high up. It doesn't actually even sit close to the front sight. Uh, speaking of the sight, it is designed to co-witness. So you can see there's a little trench back here in the rear of the optic that you can use with the front sight. Uh, it's a little difficult to pick up and because this gun is designed to be a red dot, you're probably going to be running it in a red dot format. It uses a standard 2032 battery. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the battery life of the gun, but it shouldn't be too terrible. Standard slide lock, slide lock, slide lock, slide lock on the side. It also releases a slide. And overall, again, it's not too much different from the CPX-1, except for the fact that it's a different firing mechanism, which we'll take a look at in a second. The overall feel of the materials is something we need to talk about. Now, this gun isn't cheap except it kind of is, it's $380. $380 is closing in on used Glock money. However, this comes with the optic already on it. And if you were to go with like a cheap sight mark, which is a good optic, it's just they're not that expensive, or something like that, you're going to spend in the $100 to $150 range for a okay optic. And the Crimson Trace one was okay. If the write-on is anywhere close, it should be okay. And because of that, you're basically paying $230 for a double-stack 9mm striker-fired gun that comes with two magazines. The reason I'm not really going over the box is because it's literally just a cardboard box with a couple of mags. This guy's uh, version of a trigger lock which is decent, except for the fact that these keys are made out of plastic, and that's all there is to it. What that also leads to is the grip, while okay feeling, you know, the stippling is okay. It should have uh, a little bit more aggressive, I think, especially for the size of the gun, considering that without the magazine in it, this is a three-finger affair. But with the base pad installed, or excuse me, but with the magazine with the finger groove in there, it fits perfectly. But go to your local store and pick one up, and the frame feels a little cheap. Now, on a striker-fired gun, especially one that was designed to be polymer and steel, this is not really a load-bearing part. On a 1911, a Browning High Power Beretta, the frame does more of the structural stability of the gun. This is designed with... Hopefully, I haven't taken it apart yet, but as long as it has the steel insert in it, it should be designed with just running on the rails and the chamber does all the holding of the pressure, theoretically. If it works in practice, we'll have to see, but it worked fine on the original, except for the fact that it would actually crack up here and not down here. I rarely see a frame go bad on this guy. I just, it feels like an air gun version of a gun. Sorry if that was a little bit long-winded. Like I said, the trigger feels fine. Uh, the controls are where they should be. The front sight having the big white dot and then blackout on the rear is decent. Let's go ahead and take it apart. In order to do that, you bring it back and make sure that she is clear. You're going to leave it in the rear position, and I don't think I brought some to take it out with, so let's see if the back of the key is strong enough, because you need to get down here and pop this guy out. Hey, it is. It is actually strong enough. This little Cross pin needs to come out. You can go ahead and use the top of your box for your parts holder. And because it is a striker fire, you do need to pull the trigger to disassemble it. But other than that, it comes apart just like an original Sky. Taking out the spring, double spring, which is another change. The original was a single spring, so this should help with the shootability. Daniel, when he was at SHOT Show 2020, actually shot one, and he said that it did shoot nicely. Uh, as you can see, it's a very tiny spring in the back and then a bigger spring. This should help with the shootability. It's something that a lot of the small gun manufacturers, not the small guns, but 
or small guns, not small manufacturers, have learned put a better lockup system and recoil system in your guns. Uses the standard browning tilting action. As you can see, it uses a cam style. Locks up here at the top of the ejection port. Machining inside is decent for what it is. Again, you're talking about a gun that without the red dot is like 280, 250, something like that, which is in line with the market. You have your standard drop safety or your firing pin safety back here. And the machining actually looks pretty good for the for the gun. Here is where everything happens, and you can also see that it is removable if the frame does get catastrophically damaged because the serial number is up here on the fire control group. And this is what I meant by it's designed to use the fire control group and the slide as its functioning parts. This is full rails, metal, and very thick. And it's still very simple. Very simple. A lot of the mechanisms look very similar to the CPX one. So it's just a trigger. Trigger bar goes back to here. Trigger bar releases that. Pushes up the drop safety. Of course, the firing pin safety as it releases the uh, striker. Because this is no longer is a hammer. It just lets go of the striker and lets the striker go home. Overall, quality is not bad. You can see it does have some reinforcing ribs put in there, which... Kind of comes back to the whole, this is a little bit cheaper material. It needs the reinforcing ribs to help keep it from being squishable. I've seen other guns, uh, the kel PF series, by the way, is one of them that uses a very cheap plastic as well. And without the ribs, they squish a little bit up there. Is it detrimental to the gun? No, but it could cause a problem down the line. Reassembly, super easy. Barrel go in. Recoil spring, you just have to be careful. Actually, as I'm looking at that, I do want to show that. The recoil spring perch is quite thin. If anybody has one, if they've had a failure there, let me know. The Diamondback D, uh, DB9 series had a problem with that, where this material was too thin, and it was actually cracking on them. So, if anybody has one of these guns, if you've had that failure yet, let me know. I'd be very interested in finding out. All you gotta do is line your gun back up, make sure that your spring is straight, otherwise this will come sticking way out because you didn't line it up correctly. Bring it back to here, take your cross pin, insert it, and just push it back in. Super easy. Super simple, except for when you miss where your target is. So, while I'm talking to you, let's go ahead and fix that because I'm an idiot. I missed the hole. You missed the hole, Grandma. That's something I forgot about on the skies. The barrel is like a free-floating unit, so you have to actually make sure you line it all the way up. Pull your barrel all the way forward, excuse me. Uh, it's one of the things I forgot about with this gun. There you go. Now the barrel is in the right position. You can bring it back to close. That's why I do these as one takes, man. Sometimes I learn something with you. Make sure that your functionality is returned. And there you go. What do I think of the Sky DVG-1 with the red dot? Well, I haven't shot one yet. Daniel has. He says it's a much better shooting gun. I do want to pick one up. I'd rather get one without the red dot. Personally, I, I just I haven't trained with red dots at all, so I'm not familiar with them, and I don't want to waste my time dialing one in. I mean, on my rifles, I have them, but on my handguns, I don't. But if I do get the opportunity to buy one, some one comes in used, etc., I'll pick one up, and we'll take one to the range and see how it shoots. There are two at the store right now. If you'd like to pick one up, give them a call. Uh, Harrisonburg, Virginia, again, Liberty Arms. Say, hey, man, saw it on the Jiminy Show, and I'd like to pick that up. Sorry, somebody turned off the house alarm. Uh, there we go. Skies DVG-1. Pretty good gun for the money, I think. Uh, time will tell. Shooting will tell. The CPX-1 survived as long as it did because even though it was junk, it was reliable junk. Kind of like High Point, only much better. So come back for a test on that. We'll see how it does. I'm Joe. This is Jiminy Show. I got three others to film. Become a member. And as always, I'll talk to you later.